Hi, it's The Wire. It is July 25th, 2024. Always 1776.com. Also wealthspinning.blogspot.com. Let's talk about markets. Uh, but first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Nothing I say in this video should be construed as investment advice. First, let's just talk about a mistake that's being made uh, by a major corporation in broad daylight. I understand they're activists, investors who have been pushing for things that can raise the profit margin, and I understand this uh, company has been under pressure. But as someone who, within the last week, took a flight on Southwest, I am absolutely astonished that Southwest is about to do away with open seating. Right, folks need to understand their brand. <clears throat> Longtime Southwest flyers loved the airline because they understood how to game the system. Right? You knew when you had to check in 24 hours before your flight so you would be able to get a good boarding number. Right, That's the whole point of taking Southwest. I didn't consider other airlines because I knew I could either buy early check-in or I could call in at the right time and get the boarding pass. Not only that, you know, since I travel with, you know, other people, we knew we could all sit together on the plane. This wasn't one of those situations where, you know, someone bought their ticket later than you did and there was no chance of sitting together. With Southwest, you had an advantage that the other airlines could not match and that you could go on trips with friends and whenever everyone bought their tickets. As long as everyone remembered to either get early check-in or to call in at the right time, we could all sit together on the plane. Now the problem with activist investors is for them it's an investment. They don't see it the way customers do. This is just a lament in general. Uh, in capitalist markets, right? They're just interested in, you know, getting higher margins. They don't understand that all margins are endangered when you turn off long-term customers who love the airline for its idiosyncrasies, right? So take a look at the Southwest story. It's really fascinating because air travel is up. Apparently, Southwest's peers are doing a little bit better than Southwest. Now they're going to throw out the baby with the bathwater. They're going to chase higher margins, not realizing that it's the lower margin customer that gave that airline sustainability, that gave that airline a higher floor than their competitors. Let's shift gears. Uh, the reason for this video today is really the release of numbers by Ford. Now, it's been a long time story here online um, on my site where I've lamented the fact that electric vehicles really were being overhyped. They really lack some of the advantages of internal combustion engine cars. Right? You're away from home, you're in the middle of nowhere. The odds of there being a charging station are much lower than the odds of there being a gas station. Right? Understand, you're up against it in an EV when you understand that your battery only has a certain shelf life and that it costs thousands of dollars to replace your battery. So Ford was in the EV space and they just released their numbers. Let's just say their electric vehicles underperformed expectations. The stock is down big today. 
right? I need for people also to realize that these EV companies are not all alike, right? Take Tesla. You know, Tesla has a robotics unit that it has folded into Tesla. So as you think about Tesla, you have to think about this robotics unit that's separate and distinct from its EV car brand. I believe the robotics unit is going to take off in the future. It's going to subsume the EV brand car. Make no mistake, I live near a charging station. My neighborhood has a lot of Teslas. I've been in Teslas and they're great you know, from a uh, consumer experience standpoint, right? As a passenger, Uber drivers, for some reason, around where I live, um, are starting to get Teslas, right? But you understand that internal combustion engine cars are going to be with us for quite some time. I can fill up at a gas station faster than I can at a charging station. The car can go farther than it can as an electric vehicle, right? I can have an internal combustion engine car for years. Understand, one of my cars is a 1989 car, right? Without feeling that I'm going to have to pay thousands of dollars to get a new battery five or six years in. So the EV story was always overhyped. Understand too, I'm making this video from California. We have problems with our electric grid as it is. Right? If everyone started driving EVs, I don't even think the current grid would be able to support all that. Just realize that the investor has sniffed it out. EVs are having a hard go of it. Also, if you're in a foreign market, understand China right now is exporting cheaper EVs that are being sold in the United States. What we learned from Ford's numbers here is that their EV division is struggling, right? With regard to Tesla, just understand part of Tesla's market value comes from its robotics unit. Right? Just understand Elon Musk is a smart guy. He doesn't want to separate out that robotics unit from his Tesla EV company, which is paying him a lot to run it, as it should. Right? I believe Musk understands that if he just had a standalone electric vehicle company that didn't involve robotics, the market value would be a lot lower, in my opinion. Let's shift gears here. What I want people to do is to go online and Google on YouTube Nick Gurley, uh, Reventure Consulting. He discusses real estate. He's discussing other things, right? Car repossession rates, for example, right? Reventure is more than just real estate. And I want people to also look up Danielle DiMartino Booth. She used to work for the Fed. Right? She is firmly of the belief that we, in an election year, when they usually, government usually tries to convince us that happy days are here again, Danielle DiMartino Booth, uh, who was recently on Saks Realty, another outfit that you need to follow, right, is talking about America currently being in a recession. Understand, people like Thoughtful Money's Adam Taggart agree with her. Right, so what I want people to recognize here is that China right now is worse off than we are. Right, China, of course, a big buyer of U.S. sovereign bonds. Folks, they're a creditor of ours. They're not doing so well. And of course, Donald Trump, Mr. Tariff, 
is on the verge of being reelected. And of course, his tariffs are directed against China, right? We are not in a free market pro-international trade era. This is not the 1990s. There's a lot of pain out there, right? Look at Germany, for example, right? Folks, Germany is struggling. In the UK, they just knocked off their prime minister, right? Just, uh, just realize what's happening in the world. Things are fragile. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. Everyone is giddy. Everyone is smiling. Uh, Kamala Harris looks like she's the presumptive Democratic nominee, right? Everyone's trying to convince you that government has done a great job for you and will continue to do a great job, right? What world are these people living in? You need to dispel all this misinformation and look at actual numbers. Right, folks? It's not good news when investors looking at new technologies, um, and Lord knows we have a lot of them, right? AI is still in its infancy. Um, you know, as people are looking at the legalization of some crypto ETFs, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, just understand that in this environment, it's disturbing when investors are bidding up the price of gold. You don't do that when you have other investment opportunities. If I firmly believe in the greatness of NVIDIA, one would think I would just continue to shovel money there, right? If instead a sizable block of investors are saying, you know what, let me shovel the money into gold, which is up big this year, silver, which is up big this year, Bitcoin, which is up big this year, right? Let me shovel my capital into wealth preservation vehicles then that should tell you how bearish the current environment is. Warren Buffett has been selling, according to reports, shares of Bank of America. Folks, I believe it's only a matter of time before banks stop bluffing. <clears throat> banks stop bluffing. And they start opening, uh, openly admitting that they have exposure to the disaster. That's what it is. Disaster. That is commercial real estate. Right, folks? Here, I can tell you, you go through San Francisco, downtown San Francisco. It's not the same. You understand, too. Just talk to your friend. Say, hey, player, you used to work downtown. Now you get to work from home. Which one do you prefer? Folks, I'm guessing most of your friends aren't in a rush to get back to their downtown offices. I'm guessing you're going to have activist investors stepping forward and saying, hey, can't we reduce the cost of having an office downtown by having a workforce who we acknowledge and recognize is going to be working predominantly from home, right? Aren't virtual offices where you're at home in Palo Alto, somebody else is at home in Mountain View, somebody's at home in Castro Valley, and they're all having virtual meetings. They're all on Zoom, Microsoft Teams, right? Uh, isn't that the future? Well, let's go one step further because... Right now, you have really a game where no one wants to admit that price levels are going to change dramatically. You do understand, don't you, that commercial real estate mortgages are predominantly interest only, right? So you know what's going to happen. 
businesses headed into a recession are going to have reduced margins as it is. Then, of course, the landlord is going to say, hey, look, um, you know, we have our own costs. The bank is going to say, hey, look, you know, we have to raise the interest rates you got after several years of artificially low rates. Several years. Right? So, folks, what's going to happen is going to be an era, in my opinion, one man's opinion, right? I'm just another person out there like everyone else. I'm not claiming to run a Fortune 500 company, right? I'm just a consumer. I don't work in downtown San Francisco, right? But what you're going to have is an era of rolling admissions, Right? Companies are going to say, hey, you know what? We can no longer afford to be downtown. Many groups that own these commercial buildings are going to say to their banks, hey, man, take the building. Right? We don't want to continue to own it because the value has dropped to such an extent that we're just cutting losses by giving you the building. Right? We don't want a new mortgage at some higher rate. Let me uh, close by saying not only are happy days not here again, but folks, the times are downright scary. Right, No one really is talking about how bad things are in China. We're talking about rate cuts at a time of a $35 trillion government debt. How low can the rates actually go when the government needs to borrow that much money? Let me quote the great, and he is the great in the Dwyer household, Luke Grauman. Right, another name you need to know and you need to follow. Luke recently said, what I want to know is who is watching the U.S. for the last two to three weeks and thinking, I am going to lend these politicians money for 10 years at 4.2% with the U.S. nominal GDP growing 5% plus and deficits at 7% of GDP. Right, folks? You know... How do you put it? The talk of lower rates is fanciful, isn't it? I mean, aren't you thinking to yourself privately that a government with a $35 trillion debt is a risky creditor if you want to get back the purchasing power that you're lending? And if you are dealing with the time value of money, where you're lending money on a 10-year loan, right? And they're only going to give you less than 4.5%. That's today, right? Are they really going to cut the rates? Where's capital going to come back? <laughs> Where's capital going to come from? to fund our spending, to induce people to buy our bonds, aren't we going to have to increase, increase the rates a little bit? I don't know about you, but when I go to a fast food restaurant, I was at a Carl's Jr. with my daughter recently, right? And folks, many of the burgers were being sold for more than $9 a burger. Right, $9 a burger. And this was at a fast food outlet. Right? Folks, inflation is continuing on. Please consider Googling interviews of John Williams of Shadow Stats. There's a great interview of him on Wall Street for Main Street on YouTube. Right, where he's talking about how stagflation is running amok 
in the United States right now. Please don't get seduced in this election year by these political narratives where we are supposed to believe that happy days are here again. Understand too, there is a world market. Markets don't end at our borders. You need to be concerned when there's a change of leadership in France, in the United Kingdom, when real estate is hopelessly overvalued in places like Australia where China is in disarray right now under significant stress the residential real estate market in China is in tatters right that's the world we live in Ford of course is down They've had to admit that their EVs aren't selling like they have hoped. Right, folks, just understand, according to Nick Gurley, Reventure Consulting, car repossessions are up. Right, don't be seduced by nonsense. Look at actual markets. The people who are investing in gold right now believe that their money is safer there without a dividend than it would be invested in, you know, regular stocks. That speaks volumes. Be careful. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. Let me just say Nick Gurley, Danielle DiMartino Booth, Bubba Horowitz, Luke Grauman, uh, the information is out there on YouTube. I hope, Sax Realty, I hope you look up. Adam Taggart, I hope you look up these commentators. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Understand, too, the way inflation works, right? You know, your friend will say, hey, I got a raise. Right? You'll say, how much was the raise? They'll say, I got an extra 1% of my salary. And you'll understand to yourself that they're losing money because the inflation rate is higher than that. Right? Understand, too, we keep hearing that, oh, they've gotten inflation under control. <laughs> That's what I keep hearing. Folks, the prices are still going up. It's not like the inflation rate's at zero. Right? You're still losing the value of your dollar. And look at how much of that value you've lost since 1971. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.